Well, in the back, finally, there's Jimmy Uso, and he wants to know who Paul got. And Paul, you know, Paul, who'd you get for us? Who's it going to be, man? Who's it going to be? And Paul, he said, I've interviewed every man in the locker room, and no one is worthy. No one is worthy <laughs> of teaming up again yeah. with you people. Auditions are over. We're not going to take any more tryouts. <laughs> I've got full faith in you, Jimmy Uso, and Solo. I'm not worried. And Uso says, I'm worried. Yeah, they were and great I, here. I thought well, they were I great. I wrote at the time, this is ridiculous, but they're making it work. Right, because they're good. And not even just Paul. I thought that Jimmy was good in this. I thought Solo, you know, doing what he does as yeah. being the, the man of few words. Not a lot of people could pull it off like what you're saying, what Heyman was doing, where he was saying, that's it. No one's worthy of you guys. There aren't, not everyone would be able to pull off that kind of, of kind of, uh, you know, chicanery of, of two-facedness, Con. Con. right? He's so good at being that two-faced kind of, I'm going to just, you know, make you think one thing and not everybody could do that. Well, and, 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 and they play to his it. strengths. Let's face it. They have, it start. it may have started years ago as a rib, but Paul has embraced it. They've made his inside the wrestling business reputation slash persona from ECW, his current one where he is out for himself. He's weaselly and conniving, and he'll bullshit everybody to get them to manipulate them to his will, and then he'll tell the other person the exact opposite. The whole nine yards. And now he has made this his gimmick, and it's an art form, and he's brilliant. And that's, you know, that's the old, who was it? I can't remember who it was, but one of his guys in ECW called him up. One of the main event guys, might have been Bubba Ray, somebody, said, Paul, where's my fucking plane ticket? I FedExed it. Well, what's the tracking number? Uh, 5496426753. And he said, well, that's that's too, too many numbers. And Paul said, well, just take the last two off. <laughs> and hung up on him. <laughs> but anyway, so Paul says, I'm not worried. And Uso's like, I'm worried. And Solo says, I'm not. And then, then Jimmy says, well, if Solo ain't worried, I'm not worried. And you know they got to have something up their sleeve. And sure enough, Immediately, there's Randy Orton's entrance, and within 15 seconds, they've jumped Randy Orton in the aisleway, and they've Samoan spiked him, and the referees come out, and the heels go to the rig, and we go to a break in like one minute. Just, oh, shit, Orton's fucked. And this is the only thing I didn't like about this deal, because this has been, over this show, not only a show-length storyline thread, whatever you want to call it, but it's been wrestling. It's been wrestling, the fucking authority figure that Tony Khan ought to have. It, uh, Nick Aldis was available, by the way, for the past few years. At some point, if Tony Khan needed an authority figure, which he sorely does, all these people were available, or at one time were Tony's. But you've got the authority figure making a match. The heels are trying to fucking get out of it. And then they're going to commit heelish acts against the baby faces who are going to have to retaliate. This is wrestling. Yes, some of the other shit's preposterous and or in the middle is filler. But with the stars and the top guys, you're understanding this. And everybody in their, in their role is performing it well. And it's not illogical or just goofy and crazy. You can follow this shit, right? Except... They come back from the break after they've jumped Orton and they recap, well, here's what just happened. And the heels are standing in the ring and they play AJ's music. And he comes out, even though he waits in the, in the, in the floor, in the aisleway until a LA Knights music plays. Now he comes, these heels have just jumped Randy Orton and beat him up. Where was LA Knight and AJ? <laughs> the referees came out. The, the security came out. Why did his partners come out? Oh, they were they making sure their music, music was queued up. Yeah, they, they, they're not, you know, they don't get activated until their music starts. They're like androids or something. Uh, that's, I mean, that was the, the lapse in this. In, again, if a Bill Watts or an Eddie Graham or a Dusty Rhodes or whatever, there would have been AJ and LA checking on Randy Orton as soon as the damage happened in the aisleway and the heels go to the ring right. and then the fucking baby faces say, fuck you guys and jump in. 
but they've got to do their breaks. They got to do their entrances to fill their network time. And there's also the unspoken. There's that unspoken thing that it's one of those things that I guess people just say, well, it's wrestling because you ha- you can have these guys like Orton who, when they're in the ring, you can shoot them with like a bazooka, you know, and, and they'll get up two seconds later. But if you jump them in the aisle, you know, and hit them in the throat with your thumb, then forget yeah. it. They're out. They're, they're absolutely done out. They have to be taken out of the match, you know, but obviously it was all set up for Orton but- to make his triumphant, you know, return mid match. You know what phrase I never heard when I got in the business and for 15 years after that, maybe it's wrestling, right? A lot of even the guys now that have been around for a while, it's wrestling. I guarantee you Bill Watts, when giving me a finish, never said if I called out that there was something that might be illogical or some loophole or something, he never said, ah, it's wrestling. No, and, and, and no, but anyway, nevertheless, so here comes AJ and here comes LA Knight. And then they finally, when they're both there, they get in the ring. And now it's AJ and LA against Solo and Uso. Where are Comorato and a go go when you need them? And AJ and LA Knight are arguing with each other about who's going to start or whatever because they're reluctant partners and the, the heels jump them from behind and start getting some heat on them and make them have to come back out from under it. And Nobody says this. This may be an unpopular opinion. And I think the world of them is personalities. But neither one of the Usos is smooth. The Usos are not classically trained work. Neither one of them is Brad Armstrong, is what I'm trying to say. They are, they look like they might might be awkward to work with at some points. And I don't remember ever looking forward to Uso's matches, just what is Uso going to do or say, or whose side is whichever Uso going to be on, but not, wow, I can't wait to see that fucking match. Am, am I being too critical? Um, no, I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, they're, they're where they're at for a reason. I, I, I like them. I think they've, they've God, they've been around so long. I think they may have, well, they're not a tag team anymore, but I think they have some kind of a record. You know, you could almost say that about a large carbuncle on your neck. <laughs> right. ah, I don't like it. It's been around for so long. It doesn't really, but I've got used to it. I mean, they're, they're good. I, I enjoy their matches. They're not terrible. I wouldn't call them one of the best working teams in the business at any point. They've had a lot of longevity, and they're they're fairly good at what they do. That's my ringing endorsement. <laughs> well, it, is the longevity because of lack of uh, competition in the field anymore? But nevertheless, so the baby faces fight up and beat up the heels for a couple minutes, and they go to the break in two minutes. Even the main event break in two minutes. But when they came back. They basically go into it. It's a, it's, this was a storyline set up and there's nothing wrong with that because their storylines are landing. They're, they're registering with people, but AJ finally went for the tag. They got the heat going on him, but solo had pulled LA Knight to the floor and LA Knight dealt with him, ran him into the stairs, whatever, and goes back to the corner after AJ's already been pulled back and, can't tag him so now aj gets free and sees him again and he's pissed and won't tag him he's going to stand there in the middle of the ring and argue with him about where the fuck were you and then uso goes to super kick aj from behind but aj ducks it and uso super kicks la knight off the apron unfortunately for him where he's going to have to sell for the next fucking two minutes or so from one kick and then AJ and Uso have the double knockout because here comes Orton's music. Now, th- this was kind of sort of an old-fashioned Southern angle that I love and have done a number of times in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, OVW, wherever, but kind of a, a brevi- truncated, maybe, where if the baby face that has been waylaid at the start finally comes back with his cut head bandaged up or his bad wrist in a fucking tape or whatever the case, right? Or another baby face to take his place who's even, you know, in in fine fettle, runs down and jumps on the apron of the ring and grabs the turnbuckle and starts reaching for the tag and works the people into it. And then you do spots where the baby face, the heat's getting on him in the ring or the heat's being gotten on him in the ring. He now tries to fight for the tag there and you can get a minute or two with the couple of 
milk spots there. And then finally you get the tag. But they just said, fuck it, let's get this over with. They played his music and sent Orton out. He jumps up on the apron and AJ immediately jumps over and tags him. And Orton makes the big comeback. And now the fans are up because it's Orton. And they're chanting, Randy, Randy. And he and Uso go back and forth. And then Orton RKO's Uso, one, two, three, and gets a huge fucking pop. And then Solo jumps Orton. But AJ forearms Solo. And LA rolls back in to give the BFT to Solo. And then Randy Orton RKO's Solo. So basically... Uh, you know, they won the match after being slaughtered last week. I agree. I, I usually like to put the baby faces shining and then the heels slaughtering them in reverse order and then make the people, you know, wait till the big show to get to see the heels get even, but they got slaughtered last week. So this week without Roman, they won the match and then they all three to give solo an out. It took three guys with their finishes to fucking level him. And then they went to the floor and beat the shit out of the heels some more and power bombs solo through the announce desk. And Paul Heyman called Roman on his mint mobile plan. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a, it was a heck of a main event and the, and the people, their stars in the match and they had a story behind it and the people were ready to see it. And it fucking worked. I don't know why this is hard for some people to understand. It worked because people are invested in the individuals, in the characters. They care. You, you have to make people care. You can put people in a similar type of a match that, ha that the fans haven't been made to care about, and they're not going to have that same reaction to it. It's like what we were saying about the, the women's divisions and the two companies. It's not like magically there are better women wrestlers in WWE than AEW. I don't think that's true. I think they both have talented people it's just they don't make i don't know if, you, if you put those if you put those names down on paper and oh, then count I, it in which side I, switch yes i didn't say it was 50 50 even yeah. but i will say i think there's enough over there that if they wanted to turn it into something people gave a shit about they could but as far as this main event goes yeah i mean people are invested the storylines are established they know who everybody is they believe in them that randy orton that baby face come out of the locker room thing it never gets old. It reminds me of people in the Northeast that would remember it's a it's a big sports moment. And I always think sometimes that this inspired a lot of it. In the 80s, there was a famous uh, basketball match. People will know this where Larry Bird on the Celtics, he smashed his face on the parquet floor at Boston Garden and they took him out of the game and you thought he was done. And, and that before the game ends, he comes out of the locker room. I mean, it was like something out of wrestling. Yeah. And he's all banged up, and he's like, put me back in the game. And the Boston Garden is going insane, and, and they wind up winning the game. And, and it just always reminds me of that when uh, when Put me in, in coach. Yeah. <laughs> put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Well, they called it, in again, when I got into business, late 70s, early 80s, the spirit of 76, because the guy comes out, you know, like the famous painting, the fife and drum, and the fucking guy at the crutch, and he's wrapped up, spirit of 76 comeback. Oh, that, there's and it's a moment been that way for years that well, it's basic human nature. Have you ever seen a, there's actually a, a, a match where Andre the Giant did exactly that. It was at Madison Square Garden. He came out in the middle of the match. He had his whole head bandaged up. He's all bloody. And Gorilla Monsoon shouts out like the spirit of 76. <laughs> he actually said it. Yeah. Well, there you go. And that's again. This is why that whether you like it or not, I'm not making these numbers up. I'm just reporting facts. WWE's pulling away with this thing. They have more stars. They have more viewers. They're making more money because they the people understand this shit and they're involved in the personalities. They're not watching to see dumb shit Austin Theory try to break his neck but doing a backflip. They're 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 here for the stars to talk to them and tell them what they're going to be fucking doing and occasionally show them a little bit of of doing it. And again, that's Tony is doing the exact opposite of what's working. He is taking random people that look like Ned that have no major league experience and do repetitive, redundant shit over and over. 
and he's putting them on television to do it over and over. And that is the, the side of the business that people are not responding to. They're not buying tickets to the returns of AEW at these house shows. They're not increasing their television viewership. They're decreasing it. They are not increasing the quality of their talent roster. They're hospitalizing it. And it couldn't be more obvious, and it couldn't be more different what they're doing. But in this case, different is not good to be the alternative to the WWE when it's a bad different, when it's not a very, a not very good different. If you want to have an alternative to McDonald's, don't fucking sell pepperoni and fucking goddamn pineapple pizza. That is not even in the genre. Have a, a better burger or a tastier burger, but don't completely goddamn change what the fuck your, the product is. It's what they're, it's this, well, you know, the whole deal, Brian Solomon, is just that Tony only listens to himself. He can't hear anybody else saying that everything is not great he can't hear other people he can't believe it that they can't see why this is foolproof and it's all because the sounds in his own head are louder than the, the voices of the people around him i think it's almost like that what he's done is he listened to our program you know from the start you know that that's commonly oh, yeah. accepted fact yeah yeah, yeah. And he listened to our Raycon wireless earbud spots and he got a pair and he put them in and he forgot to take them out. Hmm. And now all he's hearing is his own voice over and over on his tapes that he made in his basement as a teenager when he was booking his e-fed. And that's what he's doing now. He's belching that forth on the printed page because the every day he ought to be have his head examined and maybe x-rayed to see if they can find and remove the Raycon wireless earbuds. I think that must be the only explanation. What do you think, Brian? You, you really think that, that that has anything to do with it? I mean, I think you're well, being I'm, kind. I'm just reaching here. It could hmm. be that he's just completely batshit insane and ready for a rubber room at the Puzzle Factory, but our friends at Raycon appreciate the mention because they do have the everyday earbuds that look, feel, and sound better than ever and have a perfect in-ear fit. And if you're wearing them, and you wear your hair just the right way, people probably wouldn't even know that they're there. So you might even be able to hook up some kind of walkie-talkie device where somebody could hide behind a bush and tell you what to say to the girl you're on a date with if you're a fumble mouth that can't get laid. Or if, that old chestnut. if you're wearing Tony Storm's fuzzy hat over your head, you might not be able to see the, the, them in your ear because they'd be covered well, by the hat. And and if you were wearing them and you were wearing Tony Storm's fuzzy hat, then somebody could get on the walkie-talkie and say, hey, dipshit, take that goofy-looking hat off. Or poor Adam folks, Hopkins could run over and frantically kind of get it off of you. That That's another possibility. And if we knew who Adam Hopkins was, that would be fucking hilarious. But, <laughs> folks, I'll tell you one thing. Raycons will give you eight hours of playtime. And, my gosh, speaking as a... Man of 62, I haven't had eight hours of playtime in 10 or 15 years, but also a 32-hour battery life, so she'll like it too. And the Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands and actually a quarter of a price of some stolen merchandise that I've dealt with in the past, but that's out of the back alley, and we can't talk about it because it's under a gag order. But it's no wonder, folks, that Raycon's everyday earbuds have tens of thousands of five-star reviews because this is what Uncle Dave listens to his Tokyo Dome pleasure soundtrack on, and he gives everything five stars. The customizable sound profiles, the earbud tap functions. You can tap these earbuds, and holy mackerel, you ought to taste that sap. And it's got the noise isolation mode and the awareness mode. So you can isolate yourself from extraneous noise or aggravating things like your spouse's voice. Or you can tap the awareness mode and instantly you'll be aware of your surroundings and be able to answer the question of what is the meaning of life. All this 
with earbuds, folks. Go to buyraycon, B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash J-C-E right now, this second, today at least, and you're going to get 15% off your Raycon order and free shipping. That's if you do the slash J-C-E. You're going to get 15% off and free shipping. If they can't ma mail it to you and pay for it, they'll bring it to you themselves and hand deliver it, reaching through whatever part of your home. If you want to open a window, they'll just pitch it in, whatever the case. Buyraycon.com slash J-C-E, 15% off, free shipping. It's like a sore dick and a busted drum. You can't beat it.